Thank you so much to my 15280 students for nominating me for this Teaching with Digital Technology Award. We are obviously living at a very important time for higher education, and uh, we have collectively the opportunity to reinvent how we're delivering that type of content. And I'm very much looking forward to understanding how collectively we, we find new ways of delivering um, technological content to, uh, to our students to, em to empower them to use them in practice, but also to enhance their educational experience. The materials that we explore and the sense of community that we foster provides us with the space and opportunity to showcase our care for one another. And so once we had to face the tragedy of COVID-19, the means to express our care and our joy for being together change, but the foundation remains the same. My main approach to teaching is really oversharing uh, in the interest of building community. I think that there can be no real learning without trust, and there can be no trust without sharing our own vulnerabilities. And it just so happened that the week of the campus closure, we were discussing the importance of connectedness to place for human well-being. So I immediately asked the students to think about what it feels like when the place that you feel most connected to is wrested from you. Could this help us empathize with the plight of displaced peoples in the world, for instance? I wanted the students to be anthropologists, studying this strange new reality, and for that spirit of curiosity to empower them and to give them strength. The different life circumstances out of which we make meaning, what we often call our backgrounds, a fitting metaphor perhaps for the Zoom era, has now come ever to the foreground. Remote teaching was a heartbreak, though it had its unexpected boons, as speaking with students fixed in equally sized video boxes made our discussions more democratic. Though also made clear, because of the absence of students, unable reliably to connect, how far we have to go in building this commons. A fact highlighting the real danger in which US and world democracy now find themselves a peril that must see us confront racial injustice, digital division, public health catastrophe, and the rise of unreason. We threw away all or most of our plans in the interest of getting the best learning experience to our students. When we first got word that this semester was going to be online, one of the thoughts that went through my head was, how is a two-inch high, two-dimensional version of me possibly going to compete with all of the other things that are on students' computer screens. The first time I set up a graph, I actually walked off screen and then did a little computer trickery and it looked like I walked inside of the graph inside of my slide. Luckily, MIT has great resources in digital learning, such as the videotaping rooms and the MITx system. When the class was moved online, I decided to use OneNote as my virtual blackboard. It's quite easy to use, writing and drawing on it feel really smooth. CatSoup is uh, free and open source software. It's freely available online. Uh, and over the past several semesters, we've seen a pretty steady increase in the number of subjects using it at MIT. Uh, and you know, sometimes these are subjects that are very different from the ones that I teach. And so it's been extra neat to see uh, the, the things that they're doing with the software and the ways that they're uh, extending it. As well as reproducing all of the key features of in-person lectures and office hours as much as possible, the other guiding principle of flexibility meant making the course content as accessible as possible in as many formats as possible. This is a very hands-on class. We set the foundation by going through the calculations that an astronomer will make in order to determine what exposure time they should use when at the telescope. The students were able to do this for the target of their choice and then submit this as a request to the Elliott 24-inch telescope at Wallace Observatory. Although they weren't there for the actual experiments, by watching the videos and then talking with me and listening to my presentations in the lab times and then meeting with us individually about their spectra, they were able to sort of wrap this up and talk about their peptide to each other and us.
a one-on-one -on -one Zoom conference is very productive and has the advantage that the student can re record the session so that if they, we talk and say something and they forget what we said, they can go back and look at it again, which is not what happens in person when they're meeting with us in the lab. So I have to admit that when I got the email about winning a digital technology teaching award, I thought it was a joke or a scam because <laughs> I am famously clueless with technology. I have to get my students to set it up if I need a class e-list or a Google Doc or what have you. We also use technology to travel virtually when we couldn't do it in real life. For example, by walking city streets in Google View mode, visiting museum rooms, browsing our restaurant menus. For some sections of the course, I flipped the classroom. What this means is that I um, recorded lectures, um, narrated some slides and sent those out in advance. And then during the synchronous remote class time period on Zoom, we use that time to um, have more discussions, many cases, work out problems. And we also discuss the real time changes that were happening in the US tax code in response to the pandemic. Virtual class discussions just tend to stall at unexpected moments. And when that happened, what helped for me was to use breakout rooms. Learning objectives can be achieved in many different ways. You know, we might be used to achieving a learning objective um, in a particular way that's been done for many years. Uh, I think the transition to online teaching has made us take a step back and acknowledge that perhaps there are multiple ways to get at that objective. I designed a variety of games anywhere from bingo to battleship. Some ideas work better than others, but students embrace these experiments with incredible flexibility and good humor. I've been asked, what did we do to create appealing and thought-provoking lectures? Here's some tips. One, lectures are stories. Two, design for the media. We're used to seeing videos with cuts every 2.5 seconds. Keep it moving. And three, it's okay to have fun. Lots of the activities in my classes are role play simulations or scenarios uh, that put students in uh, specific contexts that mimic real world or professional practice contexts, ask them to use what they've been reading and talking about, and then give each other feedback. And then we often video what they're doing uh, so they can see how they're presenting themselves to other people in other people's eyes. I really appreciated and enjoyed uh, the discussions via Zoom. Uh, the students were really willing to engage and ask questions, and I felt we could create, not quite, but almost a classroom atmosphere. We've learned in this digital teaching environment to bring Socratic dialogue, which allows students to be the agents who educate each other and us, the instructors. It's been a very powerful way of teaching students how to discover for themselves. I can't think enough for this. I'll never forget our class, I'll never forget uh, the spring of 2020, and I look forward to see you all on campus again.